Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Pedro Zana David. Welcome to the Narrowest Christ for All Nations. Today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit in your body. As a matter of fact, I want us to follow a series, uh, maybe for the next three weeks or more, and talk about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, and contemporary Christianity. There are important issues I actually want us to look at because a lot of things are wrong. Ignorance is ruling many who are Christians. And because of the ignorance, they are being enslaved to different kind of people. The gifts that are supposed to be that are supposed to be used to serve the church are being monetized. And a lot of people have been carried away and have been I mean, really enslaved. Let's pray. God, thank you for all your goodness and your mercy. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you speak to our hearts. May your Holy Spirit distribute to us. I have nothing to offer to your children. But Lord, if you can just rest upon me through your Spirit, I will be filled, I will be inspired to bless our hearts today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. For those of you who are not yet following this page or have not subscribed, please subscribe and also follow us. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can receive updates. Then if you want to contact me, my contact details are on the screen. So today I said we're talking about the Holy Spirit in your body. There are important things I actually want us to look at today. And each of these things are actually very, very important. I, first of all, I want us to read the test um, for today. And the test is Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I purposely choose this test for today because I there is something that I like about it and that is your um, that is the all all flesh and I that I will pour out my spirit upon non flesh today a lot of people believe that it is only a pastor that must be anointed it is only a prophet or a bishop or teacher or an evangelist that is qualified to receive the anointing of the Lord but it is not like that everybody so long as you are flesh all flesh are qualified and this is where ignorance is ruling a lot of people those who don't actually understand this they forget that today we don't operate the type of priesthood that existed in the Old Testament, today everybody is a royal priesthood. Everybody who is in Christ is a royal priesthood and they belong to this holy nation. And each and every one of us, we are qualified to house the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of God and the Spirit of God's words. So if you feel that, oh, the all flesh here is they are some selected set of people. You are totally wrong. It is upon all flesh, including servants, including male servants, female servants, everyone, your sons and your daughters, including the old men, the old women, everyone. This is one of the terms of the new covenant. And until we come to understand this, we will never get it right because this is why the devil is cheating uh, 
a lot of people a lot of people believe that they are christians but they are servants of men and they are worshiping human beings instead of worshiping god it is time to know the truth because it is only the truth that can actually set free the lies lies leads to lead to imprisonment lies lead to enslavement so today i want to talk about uh, i want to introduce us to three main things three main things i want us to understand as we look at today's message number one is having the holy spirit as the seal of ownership um a lot of people think that the holy spirit is something that only the geo only the man of god must receive and if you don't have the holy spirit uh it means it doesn't actually mean anything because after all you just a man and um you are not a pastor so you don't actually need him you don't need the holy spirit maybe you could just um speaking as uh, speaking tongues if you are taught to speak in tongues but this is not like that uh the holy spirit is actually the seal of ownership upon every christian upon every believer and if you don't have the holy spirit it's very dangerous it means you don't even belong to jesus christ uh romans chapter 8 verse 9 says that ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit it so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his it is so serious that the bible says that if you don't have the spirit of christ it means you don't even belong to him so having the spirit of god is very very important do you have the spirit of god look at it now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his there are many people that is the truth who are in the church today who do not have the holy spirit then the second thing i want to talk about is being anointed and manifesting the gifts of the holy spirit if you are anointed you are supposed to manifest the gifts of the holy spirit um acts of apostles chapter 1 verse 8 says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost after that the holy ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in jerusalem and in all judea and in samaria and unto, unto uh, the uttermost part of the earth this came to pass in the day of pentecost then the third thing i also want to let us know that it is not only a pastor that is qualified to be anointed everyone that believes in christ is actually qualified so why do we feel today that it is only one powerful man of god who is the general versia who is a prophet who is a pastor who is everything that must hear from god that is not the old the new testament christianity that is the christianity of the enslaved minds it is not we are all brethren be a bishop be a uh, a prophet what so ever name or office you are called into or any name you give to yourself we are all brethren and our gifts are to be used to serve the church not to monetize not to be monetized and uh use them to enslave people now let me make you understand a few things before continuing this message uh in genesis chapter 1 verse 7 the bible uh, chapter 2 genesis chapter 2 verse 7 the bible says god breathed into the nostril of man and man became a living soul uh in genesis chapter 3 man fell and because of the fall the the spirit of god departed from him to a very great degree the fellowship was reduced the fellowship between him and god was reduced because sin is a barrier then if we journey forward to 
Genesis chapter 6, uh, especially verse 3, we see that God said that his spirit will no longer strive with man because he is honorary dust and that his years will be reduced to 120 years. Why? Because of sin again. It was This time it was another level of involvement in sin. So we see that it is actually sin that drives the spirit of God away. A lot of people feel today that, oh, uh, I'm not worthy to carry the Spirit of God. I'm not worthy to receive the anointing. I'm not worthy to be used by God uh, because I, I, have, I don't have the call of God. Oh, it's not like that. Everyone is supposed to be a carrier of God himself. We are the temple of God. I tell you, your body is the temple of God. From the beginning, we have been created to house God. We, uh, not only a set of people, we actually created to house the Spirit of God. Every single human being was created for this purpose. So it is sin that has been the problem. And until we realize this, we will not be able to function well. Sin is a problem. Is a major problem before you talk about dedication. So, do you feel that you must receive the call of God first before you can be used by God, or you feel that uh, it is for everybody? Do you have the Holy Spirit? One thing is to have the Holy Spirit, another one is to be. Uh, baptized with fire that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost these are two different things first of all you must receive the Holy Spirit first and it doesn't take much to get anointed as we move on to this series I pray that the Lord will give us true understanding of the scriptures now look at what happened in Gen in Numbers chapter 11 uh, 27 to 29. Uh, this was the story of Moses selecting 70 elders and God taking part of his spirit and spreading it, spreading it in them. Now, Eldad and Medad did not go to the camp meeting. They were not there. But uh, they did not, even though they did not attend the meeting, they received the anointing because they have been selected. And a young man ran and told Moses that, Sir, Elder, and okay, let me read. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Elder, and me that, do prophesy in the camp. They are not in the meeting, but they are prophesying. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of these young men, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them, stop them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? He said, oh, I wish that everyone would be anointed by God. Oh, how I wish that everyone could become a prophet. Everyone of God's children could become a prophet and prophesy. Don't envy them. So this thing is not just for some people. Even Moses wished that, oh, I wish everyone... There's no need to stop them because I wish even that everyone should become a prophet. It is sin that reduced our relationship, our closeness to God. Look at Genesis chapter 6 verse 3 that I talked about. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he is also flesh 
yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. He is also flesh. I know he is spirit. I know he is spirit. But he was flesh first. Before I put my very life, the breath that made him a spirit, before I put it in him. He is also flesh. And because of that, his yes must be reduced. So that he doesn't continue to live so long and continue to do evil. Now, let me let you know something. If you look at the Old Testament, God put his spirit in men. He was initially just molded clay. But after God put, breathed into him the breath of life, he became a living soul. And when man started falling and falling and falling, how do we see someone living uh, 120 years today? As a matter of fact, the, the ages of men, the average age of humans is actually depleting every day, every day, every day. Why? Because of sin. Uh, people's ages have been reduced to 75 years and by reason of strength, 80 years. That is where we are today. But how did we get here? It is because of sin. So we have to start calling ourselves to order. Uh, calling ourselves to order so that we will know that we are on a free fall. We are falling. And until we call ourselves to order, we will continue to fall. Look at what Psalm 90 verse... Um, let me start from verse 9 because I like the verse 9. No, let me start from verse... Um, almost everything in this psalm is very useful to me, so I don't even know where to start from. Okay, let me start from verse 7. Psalm 97. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Look at verse 10, Psalm 90, 10. The days of our years are three scores, are three score and ten. And if by reason of strength, they are four score years, yet is their strength, labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and will fly away and will fly away. The psalmist noticed that it is because our sins are set before the sight of God that our years have been reduced. And that is why we are flying away so quickly. And I know that until we repent and accept majority of humans realize that they have they have fallen from grace people will continue to die young even worse than what we're seeing today i say this that i haven't actually seen any law that god gave that is against nature Everything God says, do it this way. For instance, don't be drunk. With alcohol. Don't be a drunk. Okay, if you say, I want to drink, I want to be a drunk. You will die before your time. Even do you know that fasting is medically 
good for the body. It is one of the ways you can remove poisons from your body. Fasting is good. Depriving yourself of food. Let us know where our problem is coming from so that we can be able to know that okay this is where our problem came from and this is how we're going to solve it the new testament actually what jesus christ came to do was to reverse what happened in the garden of eden and in genesis chapter 6 verse 3 he came to reverse it jesus uh, remember man was created on friday Jesus Christ died on Friday. Man was created on Friday and God rested on the seventh day. Man was the last thing that was created. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came and died. And what else did he do? He restored us back to God. He restored us back to God. And also make sure that the body that was originally for God becomes God's. He, he makes sure that we are presented back to God so that we can enjoy the fellowship that we lost in the Garden of Eden. Now about this new covenant this is what uh, jeremiah said behold the days come see the lord that i will make a new covenant with the house of israel with the house of Je judah not according to the covenant that i made with your fathers in the day that i took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of egypt which my covenant they break although i was an husband unto them, say the Lord. Uh, let's look at verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, say the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So this New Testament is a new one entirely. It has new terms. Testament means covenant. So when you look at your Bible, it is made up of two parts. The Bible is divided into two major parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. You can say the New Covenant and the Old Covenant. Or you can say the very simplest form, the old agreement and the new agreement. What is this agreement? It is the agreement between God and man. <laughs> and this time around, God says it's not going to be like the old. This time around, he's going to write his laws in our hearts. And he will be our God and we will be his people. As a matter of fact, if you read downward, you will see the operation that because my spirit is going to be in you, you don't even need any teacher anymore. Because my spirit is going to teach you. Now, look at how this is going to work. Ezekiel 11, 11, 19 or 20. And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. Look at it. This is about the new covenant. And I will take the stony heart out of thy flesh and will give them a heart of flesh that they, will, that they may walk in my status and keep thine ordinances, mine ordinances, and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. These are the terms of the new covenant. So if God says he is going to release his spirit upon all flesh, according to John chapter 2, 
Verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards. In the last days. This was exactly what happened on the day of Pentecost. Peter had to refer these people back to the scripture. That this is what the scripture says. That I will put my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. Not, on, not upon only pastors. Not upon just prophets, but upon all flesh. Men, why are you serving your fellow men? Why have you been so much enslaved? I know the call of God upon my life, but even as a child, I used to hear from God. I have dreams I wrote down from around 2000 yeah 2000 2001 2002 i have a book i wrote things god revealed to me about my future i wrote them down some of the instructions he was giving me i wrote them down that's about that's over 20 years ago i wrote them down and i will be 40 by this october 14. So who told you that God cannot speak to you? Why enslave yourself? Don't be servants of men. Be the servants of God. The gifts of the Spirit, they are for service. The Holy Spirit is for ownership. Mainly for ownership. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you don't belong to Him. That is why immediately you are accepting the Lord, the Lord comes into you. His Spirit, you, you may not necessarily speak in, tongue, in tongues when He comes. Speaking in tongues is one of the physical evidences of the Holy Ghost baptism. But when you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you repent of your sins, and the Holy Spirit comes into you. You may not speak in tongues, but that doesn't mean that you don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians 4. Uh, we will read 4 to 8. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. Following. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are difference, differences of administration by the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. But it is the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. Every man. It is given to every man. Why have some of us chosen to be slaves of men? <laughs> you see people, uh, the level of respect some men of God get today shouldn't actually go to them. I'm not saying you shouldn't respect men of God. There are people I call daddy, I dare not even call them uh, Papa this and call their names. I dare not even call their names. I call them daddy. But what I'm saying is that some of us are actually giving the respect we're supposed to give to God to men, which is wrong. Don't worship men. Some of you, your life is in the hand of a prophet. <laughs> some of you you have made some prophets your gods you think you are just honoring them but this is beyond honor it has graduated from honor honor to worship that they could tell you just anything and you you obey you don't even question anything because you have been taught and not just taught you have been brainwashed that the day you question the authority that day you are gone and 
You don't even know that the Bible wants us to test every prophecy. Um, some of you think that um, your prophets are superheroes, they are superhumans, and by reason of that, you don't even need to question anything they tell you because you feel that they are sitting in the seat of God and that the day you question anything they tell you that day they are going to take your life from you or they will lock the gates of life against you but this is not true who has enslaved us to this point that many of us now believe that looking at the Bible and comparing what your prophet is doing is actually a sin. Some of you now believe that the day you question what your prophet is doing, question it biblically, respectfully, you believe that that day you are sinned against God and you are on your way to the fire of hell. Because that is what you have been taught. Now let me read for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 29. Okay, let me start from verse 20, 27. If any man speaketh in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at most by three, and that by cause, and that by cause, and let one interpret. This is what is missing from many of our congregation and our services today. <laughs> we speak in tongues that have no interpretation. <laughs> Uh, because was, but if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. <laughs> uh, and let him speak to himself and to God. So uh, the Bible does actually forbid speaking in prof speaking in tongues in church. But if there's no interpreter, interpreter, speak to yourself, edify yourself and to God. Um, not you talking to congregation you are speaking in tongues and there's nobody interpreting and you are not interpreting no the bible says instead of that you should keep quiet let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge let the other judge yes let the other people judge the Bible says that we should judge every prophecy. Let the others sit and judge. If anything be revealed to another that seated by, let it first hold his peace. For ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. So who says that when a prophet says something, Everybody must be silent and it must be swallowed. Even when the Bible says that we should judge our spirits. We should judge our every spirit. The Lord has used me to give some prophecies. They are posted on Eagle Eye Opener Global Outreach YouTube channel and on my website. EagleEyeOpener.com I have never resisted anybody questioning what God showed me. Some of those prophecies are on biblical sexual purity when it has to do with human sexuality. I post them on biblicalsexualpurity.com. Oh, because a lot of people get offended when they hear anything about sex. So I decided to separate them. I separated biblical sexual purity website from 
my main ministry website, uh, igulayopuna.com. Who says that a man of God cannot be questioned? But look at how a lot of people who Jesus Christ died for are worshiping men of God today. Because I believe that it is only a man of God that's supposed to receive the anointing. And that they themselves, they are inferior. Okay, let's continue to read uh, the First Corinthians 12. We read from verse 4 to 8. Now let's read from verse 9 to 11. Um, let me first of all read this uh, verse 8. So that we don't forget. For to one is given us by for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom. To another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Verse 9. To another faith by the same spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, descending of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So, the interpretation of tongues is actually one of the gifts of the Spirit. But all these worketh that one and the same, same spirits, dividing to every man, not some men, dividing to give it to every man, severally, as he will. So, who, where did we get this doctrine that it is only a man of God that can have the Holy Spirit? Where did we get this from? Why are people running up and down? I remember sometimes some people could call me and and tell me, man of God, or they could message me, man of God, prophesy over my life. Man of God, prophesy to me, prophesy over my life. But does it work like that? Can you just see someone and start prophesying? Look at what is happening today in the world. Uh, sometimes on Facebook, some people will say, I see your face, I prophesy. It doesn't work like that, except you are a soothsayer. It doesn't work like that. There are times that you could see someone's face and prophecy will not come. There are sometimes some people who tell me, Men of God, let me pray about this, let me pray about this. I will pray and pray and pray and God will not say anything. But because of that prayer, it could be telling me something about someone that I am not even praying for. Someone that I'm not thinking anything about. God could choose to speak to you when he wants to speak to you. It is only a false prophet that blesses those God has already cursed. And it is only a false prophet that cursed those God has blessed. Many of those things, those people will see, they are just soothsayers. And you go to them, you sow, they tell you to sow seed. So long as you sow seed and you report something that, oh, my mother-in-law is a witch. My mother-in-law has been fighting me. Oh, they burst into prayers. That your mother-in-law must die. That your mother-in-law may fire, fire, fire. You may not even ask yourself if that person is actually a saint or it is this one that comes to you that is a problem <laughs> i've seen people come to me and say man of god pray for me and the next thing is maybe i'm at home and trying to pray and god will say don't dare open your mouth and pray for this person i don't want to see you with this person don't allow this person to consult you And he would say, this is not my child, stay away. Sometimes he may not even say anything. And at the end, he tells you, don't pray for this person. But today, 
if so long as you have money to succeed you will get the blessings you're looking for because there are people who have been believed that they have special blessings and whatsoever thing they say stands anyone that bless that person is blessed it doesn't you can't live in sin and do all the evils in the world and believe that coming before a man of god to prophesy over your life everything will change that is why a lot of people are poor in africa today you are not hard working you sleep till 10 a.m you watch telemundo you watch africa magic bollywood nollywood hollywood you are a great football fan you are not hard working but you believe that if you go before a man of god and he prophesies over your life all your problems will be over and money will start pouring in it doesn't work like that <laughs> we have to change our mentality this thing doesn't work like that or you can be living in sin and you were the man of god if god is angry with you don't you know that god is constantly angry with the sinner you can't be living in sin that god is angry with you and you think you can meet the servant of god and without god's permission he releases a decree upon your life and you start getting your breakthrough it doesn't work like that do not be deceived you can still carry the spirit of god you can still be anointed you can prophesy you can dream dreams you can have visions endlessly desire these gifts don't be slaves to men because you believe that oh i'm not worthy those things are just for these gifts are just for some special people no the bible says i will pour my spirit upon all flesh if you are a flesh you believe in jesus christ you've repented you are qualified let me pray with you thank you lord for speaking these words to us the bible comes alive whenever we look at it the bible is never too old there are no additions there is no reverse reverse edition you you don't revise the bible and write updated edition your word is yea and amen lord help us to know the truth people give different interpretations to the bible but the word remains the same lord the truth remains one and the same help us to know the truth lord you started speaking to me even as a child and i don't believe that only men of god and women of god supposed to hear from you and supposed to have the gifts of the spirit it is never like that it is for everyone lord as many that need your spirit release your spirit upon them in the name of jesus father release your spirit upon this your children as we continue in this series lord help your children to know you help them to know you in spirit and serve you in spirit and in truth not in lies not in deception Many Christians have been enslaved because of their ignorance and stubbornness. Lord, as many that really desire that you should come to live in them, Lord, live in them. Only if you can open for the Lord, only if you can open, only if you can open for Him, He's coming in, He's always knocking. Even now, I see a man standing at the door. He's knocking. He's tired of knocking. Can you open for me, son? Open for me, daughter. Study my word. Spend time in prayer. Stay away from social media and feeding yourself with faith. Kneel down and spend time with me in prayer. Even if you don't know what to pray about, sing and pray. 
and open your heart and meditate on my word. Thus so saith the Lord, and I will come and live in you. Stay away from filth, stay away from sin, be clean within and without, and I will come and live in you. Thus so saith the Lord. My spirit hovers over the atmosphere, looking for someone to come in and dwell in there. But I look around, everywhere is filled with filth. Even those who profess me, many of them don't give their hearts to me. And it pains my heart. So see the Lord, come to me and I will be found by you, says the Lord. Lord, help us. Father, please help us. Who is ready to go with me? For I am, I am waiting for my children in secluded places. Those who will seek me with a heart of repentance and want to find me, I am ready. I have been waiting. I'm ready to be found by them. Who is ready? Who is ready to seek my face? Who is ready to invite me? Who is ready? I am waiting. Says the Lord God of first. I am the Lord, your God, your friend. The one who died is the one that made this house vacant. The one who died is the one that wrote the words of this agreement in his own blood. Set up an everlasting covenant that will remain forever. The same one who died, the same one who changed the testament, is the same one who says, My arms are wide open, waiting for my children to come. Can you come? He is waiting. Lord, help us your children. Draw us closer to yourself. Even me, I need I know I need to be closer. This is not where I know I'm supposed to be. I should have grown more than this place. Lord, help us, your children. Help us not to be carried away. Help us to love you. Help us to seek you. Help us to seek you the way we're supposed to seek you. And whenever we call on you, let us find you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for speaking to us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Brethren, um, I believe you are blessed by this message. Please seek the Lord. While I was praying, the Lord used me to say some things. Please note them. Uh, please share this message. I'm going to pray more about this seeking him these words that he spoke i am going to pray about it after now and really know what to do if it is to go on a program uh, i will get back to you for those of you who haven't subscribed please subscribe and um, Turn on the notification bell. You can email me. The contact details are on the screen. Um, I will definitely, by God's grace, get back and 
ask more questions. It is sorrowful that the God who died is the one that is begging us to give him a chance to allow him in to cleanse our hearts so that he can come and live inside of us. We need to continue to put in more effort and uh, seek his face. Even me, I need to seek him more. I need to seek him more. Okay, um, those of you who have been supporting us, thank you. May the Lord God bless you. I can't, I, I'll, uh, account details on the screen and the good news is that for those of you who are in the US we have a US bank account now it is on the screen is the we have an account with the Bank of America so you can give no matter how small please support us and whatsoever thing you give we use it to run this ministry and also pay the school fees of the children we have on uh, on scholarship we have over 70 children now some of them are at the university uh, please support us so that we can reach out to people including the including some old people widows and even uh, currently we are carrying out uh, a physical rehabilitation projects and we have over 20 cases of physical deformities that we are uh, managing. We are carrying it out right now. Uh, we don't need to continue to pray until God heals those who are deformed. If we can do it medically, we have to do the worst we can and let God heal the ones He wills to heal. Thank you for those of you who have been supporting us. May the Lord God Almighty bless you. Please share this video with someone. And don't forget that Jesus Christ loves you so much. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.